let's answer the question 47 so here we are given four options regarding the increasing and decreasing function as well as regarding the concavity so we have to choose the correct option so for this uh, we'll be placing or we'll be understanding this general information regarding the increasing and decreasing function so if you look at it here uh, when f of x is increasing we otherwise say that the first derivative is positive and whenever f of x is uh, decreasing we say that uh, its first derivative is less than zero and similarly whenever the second derivative is positive uh, it confirms that the function is concave up over that interval and whenever the second derivative is less than zero we say that uh, the function is concave down over that interval in which the second derivative is less than zero so we are going to utilize this uh, general information regarding the increasing and decreasing function to choose this uh, correct option so let's go through each of the options one by one the first option we say that uh, uh, it is given as f of x is increasing uh, then f of f prime of x is positive that is this is satisfying this first condition however when you look at the second option, the second derivative is positive and f is concave down but however according to our general information when the second derivative is positive it should be concave up so we ignore this option now let's look at this second option here it is given f of x is increasing so f prime of x is positive so this is perfectly right however when second derivative is negative it is given as concave up so it is uh, matching to this one whenever the second derivative is less than zero it should be concave down but here it is given as concave up so these two do not match so we also ignore this option now let's look at this third option uh, here we see that uh, f of x is increasing then f prime of x is negative uh, it should be positive whenever the function is increasing it should be positive so it is not satisfying this condition so once again we ignore this option so finally the fourth option is going to be correct however let's verify that so the, here it is given as f of x is increasing then it should be positive so it satisfies this condition and the second derivative is positive it should be concave up it also satisfies this condition so we see that uh, the fourth option is correct now let's answer question 48 so let's look at uh, each of the options here it is given that the first derivative is positive and f of x is decreasing however according to our general information regarding the increasing and decreasing function when first derivative is positive the function should be increasing so it is contradicting each other so we can ignore this option now let's move to the second option here it is given the first derivative is positive and uh, then f of x is flat uh, once again this also does not confirm because whenever the first derivative is positive either it should be uh, increasing so it is flat so this is also not correct now let's look at the third option if the first derivative is positive it is given as f of x is increasing so this is correct now let's look at the second option that is uh, when second derivative is uh, zero then f has no concavity actually this is correct because i have not given this over here we can say that whenever the second derivative of x of the function is zero then we can say that uh, there is no concavity or otherwise we say that it is point of inflection or otherwise we can say that no concavity so therefore clearly this option is correct let's answer uh, question 40 uh, 57 so in this question we are given the function f of x equals uh, 1 over x minus 4 and g of x is given as the inverse of the function f of x we then have to calculate uh, g prime of x which is the first derivative of the g of x function so basically there are two ways that uh, we can utilize to uh, find this uh, g prime of x uh, one is going by the formula method uh, and other one is uh, finding the inverse of the function that is f of x uh, so basically finding the g of x first and then finding its derivative 
uh, I am not going to do by the formula method unless otherwise the question asks. So this is a little bit of challenging. We can see this uh, challenging method. So let's stick to the method of finding the inverse of the function uh, and then finding its derivative. So we will follow the method of in step one, we are going to find the inverse. Find inverse of f of x, which equals g of x, because it is given as g of x equals f inverse of x. So basically, we are going to find the inverse of the function f of x. So for that, uh, let me copy the f of x. We have f of x equals 1 over x minus 4. And to find the inverse of f of x, we'll fo follow the usual steps. That is, uh, first we replace f of x by y. So therefore, this becomes 1 over x minus 4. And then we interchange x and y. That is, we have to interchange x to y's and y to x's. So therefore, this equation becomes, this y will become as x, and this x will become y. So therefore, the equation becomes as x equals 1 over y minus 4. And then the next step is to solve for y from this equation. So I'm going to uh, multiply by this term y minus 4 to both sides. And when I do that, I get x times of y minus 4. This equals 1. I then distribute this. That is like this. So this becomes xy minus 4x. This equals 1. As we know that we have to solve for y. So let's keep only the y term over here. That is xy over here. And then we add this 4x to both sides. So therefore this becomes 1 plus 4x. We then have to solve for y. So I divide uh, both sides by x like this. So finally I get the value of x. Um, sorry the y as 1 plus 4x divided by x. Or otherwise this can be written as in simplified form as 1 by x plus 4x by x. This equals 1 over x plus 4. So what we have done is we solved for y. Uh, so in the step of uh, finding the inverse, the last step is to replace this as uh, f inverse of x. So therefore f inverse of x equals 1 over x plus 4. And according to this given problem, f inverse of x is basically equal to g of x. So we can rewrite this uh, f inverse of x. This can be rewritten as, let me write over here, that is uh, g of x equals 1 over x plus 4. So let's get back to the question. We have to find the derivative of the g of x. So we can now find it because we have got the function g of x. So I'm going to find the derivative, that is uh, g prime of x. This equals, I can uh, find the derivative of 1 over x by rewriting this as uh, x raised to the power of minus 1 plus 4. Now we have to find the derivative of x raised to the power of minus 4 using the power rule. So when we apply the power rule to find its derivative, we put the negative 1 in front and raise x to the power of negative 1, negative 1. So this is what we get and plus the derivative of 4 which is a constant is 0. So therefore this becomes 0. So finally this g, uh, g prime of x which is the derivative of g of x this equals when we simplify this we can rewrite this as negative 1 over x raised to the power of negative 2 which can be written as 1 over x raised to the power of positive 2. So finally we got the expression for uh, g prime of x which is uh, negative 1 over x squared. So this is the correct answer for this question and this means the last option or the last answer choice is correct. Let's answer this uh, question 58 and uh, this question is uh, more similar to question 57. So once again we are given this function f of x equals 3 over x plus 2 and g of x is basically the inverse of the function f of x. We then have to calculate uh, g prime of x. So as we did before in uh, question 57, uh, we are going to first find the uh, f inverse of x, which is basically the g of x. So let me copy this function first, that is f of x equals 3 over x plus 2. 
We then uh, replace f of x by y. So that would be the first step in finding the inverse of this function. So therefore, this becomes y equals uh, 3x, 3 over x plus 2. We then multiply by x plus 2 to both sides. So therefore, this becomes y times of x plus 2 equals 3. And then distribute this y to the two terms inside the brackets. So it becomes xy plus uh, 2y equals 3. I'm sorry, I just uh, missed one step before uh, doing the distribution. We have to interchange the x and y. So that is the next step after this step. So first let's interchange the x and the y. The y will be replaced as x and x will be replaced as y. So therefore this becomes 3 over y plus 2. We now multiply both sides by y plus 2. So it becomes x times of y plus 2 equals 3. We do the distribution now. So it uh, is like this. So it becomes xy plus 2x equals 3. Since we have to solve for y from this equation, I keep this xy as it is and uh, push the 2x to the other side. So therefore this becomes uh, 3 minus of 2x. Now I divide both sides by x. So I do it like this. So that for this side I will get only y. And this equals uh, 3 minus 2x by x. Or this is written as uh, 3 by x minus 2x by x. Or this can be simplified as 3 by x minus 2. So we got the expression for f inverse of x. We then finally replace this y as uh, f inverse of x. So this equals 3 by x minus 2. And it is already given in the question that f inverse of x equals g of x. So we can now replace this f inverse of x as uh, g of x. So let me replace this as uh, g of x. So we got the expression for uh, g of x, which means, sorry about it. So this is basically g of x. We can find this derivative 2. Let's uh, find this derivative 2. So now I find the derivative 2 that is uh, g prime of x equals uh, this 3 by x. We can write down this as uh, 3 times of, in fact, I can write down here. This is 3 times of 1 by x minus 2. So we keep the constant as it is when you find the derivative 2 and find the derivative 2 on, of this 1 by x expression. As we did in question 57, this can be written first as x raised to the power of minus 1. And when you find this derivative 2, this is equal to minus 1 times of x raised to the power of minus 1 minus 1. So therefore, this equals minus 1 divided by x raised to the power of positive square. So finally, this becomes minus 1 divided by x raised to the power of uh, 2. And uh, this is a constant, so it becomes 0. So we can write this as negative 3 over x squared. So we found the expression for uh, g prime of x. This equals negative 3 over x squared. So this is the correct answer for this question. We find the expression for the g prime of x. And this means the second answer choice is correct. The second answer choice is correct.